This is a special presentation of Farm Journal Television. Hello, I'm Clinton Griffiths and here's what's coming up on today's Corn College TV. Today we're talking soil, as in soil types and soil testing. Corn College TV heads to the field to evaluate and elevate the planter pass. And Ken Ferry answers your questions about yellowing spring corn in this week's Ask an Agronomist. Welcome to Corn College TV with field agronomist Ken Ferry, associate field agronomist Missy Bauer, Farm Journal's Margie Fisher, and host Clinton Griffiths. Welcome to Corn College TV. Today, we're teaching on two topics, soils and planting. It's no surprise for most farmers that the soils in their fields vary greatly. With each type comes different properties. When growing corn, one of the most important of those properties is water holding capacity. That factor alone can have big impacts on the crop throughout the growing season. We caught up with Ken Ferry at Corn College as he explains the importance of water holding capacity in soils. Now this is the water holding capacity of your soil, but to have that kind of capacity, what do we got to do with the water? We got to get it in there, right? situation that water has got to get in that soil. So if you have a poor structured soil, it may have good water holding capacity, but if you get two inches of rain and it runs off, you didn't get it in there. It's a situation where you have to get it into that soil. And if we can predict what the water holding capacity is in that soil, then we can start saying, here's where I need my highest and my lowest populations. At least I got to have a place to start out there. Now, if I make you a map, and I'm trying to make a prediction and be digging in your soil and you see we have some soil mollusks here and we have a sable soil here in the middle and we got the bottom of the sable and the sable at the side of the slope and you can tell by the dark black colors here of the sable itself uh, and you can tell the depth of the dark layers as far as uh, where we're coming up out of the slope heading towards these other soil types. And in this case, with the sable soil, if it's well drained, typically we could hold somewhere between two and a half and almost three inches of water per foot. And we're gonna have about three, three and a half feet of usable water. Drought shouldn't be in the vocabulary there, should it? That's a gift to farmers right there. Situation where as we change and we look at a Catlin soil type, we may be able to hold an inch three quarters to an inch per foot of soil, now we've got a different situation. We don't have as much water holding capacity within the soil profiles. And as these soil profiles change, there's where we're going to adjust our plant densities based on the water holding capacity. Now, these are some very different soils that you look across here on this soil monolith, and you can tell by the color and the organic matter. Um, we have Kiomi over here in Birkbeck. We, we, uh, we, we nickname the Kiomi here as, as, as it's almost got a, a slimy surface to it when it, gets, when it gets rained on and it seals up very quick. It'll hold water if you can get it in there, but you need an inch of rain over almost a 48 hour period. It's got to be a heavy fog to get water in this soil because of its soil structure. It'll hold water, but you, it's hard to get it in there. All of these soil types that you see here come from the 10 acres on that side of the road situation within 10 acres we can have this kind of soil change and I know some of you guys from especially from northern Iowa and Michigan you look out here and say man this is flat ground but the reality is there's a huge difference here in the soil types as far as what their capacity is and how fast they would run out of water it's a situation where using a soil survey using that information digging your own experience the situation I say that my father-in-law wouldn't need GPS to decide where to variable rate on his farms when he tips back in the seat, it's time to turn the population down. And then on your way down, you can start turning it up because the topography tells him it's pretty steep or pretty sharp out there where those changes are. We move up in the Donovan, Morocco area, it's the sand hills. We know with the sand hills in the middle of the field, they need to be backed off in that population. So we got to have the water holding capacity in place for that. Another thing that you can use as a general rule of thumb is your, um, is your soil test. So a situation where we're looking at when we look at texture, and that's what you're trying to key in on, is what's the texture is out there. The water holding capacity comes from the organic matter, basically, and the clay uh, out here in the field. So if we look at the cation exchange capacity of a soil test, and to clarify, 
This is cation exchange capacity calculated through ammonium acetate extraction. Uh, and we're going to say that their sandy soils have low CECs, the heavy clays have high CECs. And from there we can, we can dictate or tell how much, how many inches per foot this soil can hold. So what its water holding capacity is per foot. And if we figure in three to three and a half feet of, of, uh, of rooting zone, efficient above the water table, realize that up in here we got about five days worth of water once we've saturated that soil. Where down in here in a clay loam we're looking at 20 days worth of water. That's a big, big difference as far as what we should do. Within this field, then, we can move up our population up and down based on those uh, levels within the soil itself. Still to come on Corn College TV, we're talking planters. Running it right can have big impacts come harvest. Plus, why does corn get yellow in the spring? Ken Ferry answers today's Ask an Agronomist question, and you can't get the most out of your field until you know what's in your soil. Soil testing on today's Farmer's Toolbox. Corn College TV is brought to you by DeKalb. For all season strong performance and results you can take to the bin. Go with DeKalb. The brand that gets results with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry-leading DeKalb Genetics and proven Genuity Trait Technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. Mark your calendar. Ag Connect Expo 2011 is coming to Atlanta, Georgia on January 7th through the 10th. Connect with experts. Learn new ideas, new technology. Connect to the future of agriculture, the newest innovations. Connect globally with producers from around the world. This show sets itself apart from the regional shows. Ag Connect Expo 2011, where the world of agriculture comes together. Hello folks, this is Mark Gold with Top 3rd Ag Marketing. If you need help marketing your grains or livestock, give us a call. We offer one-on-one -on -one relationships that can protect you without the threat of margin costs. We don't speculate, we manage risk. If you're tired of paying acreage and management fees for marketing advice that hasn't actually helped your bottom line, then give us a call. Call today to get two weeks of Mark's private grain marketing email. Top 3rd Ag Marketing, earning the trust of American farmers every day. Growing up in agriculture, I know how important information is to America's farmers and ranchers. They have the tremendous responsibility of feeding this great nation. Here at Ag Day, we're here to help with the latest in agriculture news, agribusiness with Al Pell, the big picture on weather with Mike Hoffman, and stories about the country way of life. Join me each morning for Ag Day, the country experience. Getting that planter out every spring is pretty exciting for a lot of us. Temperatures are starting to warm up, hopefully the sun is out, the world looks good from atop that tractor, with the promise of another corn crop on the way. But as agronomist Missy Bauer will tell you, that just might be the most important work you do all year. Missy, one thing that farmers like to do is head out to the field and get some work done. And you say there's one thing that they really need to be thinking about and holding at that high level, and that is keeping the planter pass sacred. Tell us about that. Yes. Why is that so important? Yes, that's right. This planter pass, we get one opportunity to go out to these fields and try to do it right. So keeping this planter pass sacred is very, very critical. So we don't want to have a mistake that then we've got to live with the rest of the season. So take our time, make sure things are set up ahead of time, you know, planter maintenance, all those things to help us get that efficiency in the field. Because what you do here depends on what you get at harvest. That's right. It's all about ear count, and that's what it always comes down to. we got to remember that every thousand ears per acre out here is worth five to seven bushel. Wow. So if we're losing ears per acre because we're not keeping this planter pass sacred, it can become very costly. So it's got to be our top priority. And, and we're talking about so, some really important topics like stand establishment and the number of you know seeds per acre and that kind of or plants per acre. But there are also four things when you're running that planter that people 
really need to focus on or, or we're going to talk about today. Yeah, that's right. Some of the things that we really need to make sure we don't forget about is planting depth. So what is the depth that we're actually planting at and is it in moisture? Maybe sometimes it's an inch and a half, maybe sometimes it's two inches, but it's going to depend field to field, conditions to conditions. And depend on the soil type and, and what you, you have out there to deal with. Uh, now we have a lot of trash out here from last year. That's got to come into play somewhere. That's right. We want to make sure that we don't have any residue pinched into the seed trench. Because if we end up with residue pinched into the seed trench, we're not going to get that good seed to soil contact, which is another thing we're really looking for. If we get that residue down in this kind of V trench here, it'll actually wick moisture away from the seed and delay germination or emergence for that plant. So we've got to keep that residue out of the seed trench. Using things like row cleaners or trash wipers are going to help us to accomplish okay. that. And, and that all leads to, as you said, seed soil contact, which is really how you make things grow to begin with. That's right. The seed to soil contact is so important. If we get that seed placed in the soil where it's got good moisture around it, we don't want any air pockets or anything like that. Because again, we just won't get that uniformity and emergence, which is what we need for ear count. So how's the important way to get that good seed soil contact? Uh, you have to push that seed into the ground somehow. Yeah, one thing we want to keep an eye on our planter is the proper amount of down pressure. So that's the amount of pressure that we're going to take to hold that row unit in the ground. The idea is not to let that row unit bounce out of the ground, so we've got to have enough down pressure, you know, pounds of PSI on that row unit to do that. But on the other hand, if we have too much down pressure, we can cause a lot of problems with what we would call a hatchet root system or sidewall compaction, where as the roots come out, they're not going to be able to grow down like they should and all be in a straight line. No. So setting down pressure is very critical. We've got to have enough to keep the row unit in the ground, not too much that we're going to end up hurting root growth. Now, as we're driving across the field, pulling our planter, uh, is there anything that we need to be thinking about pulling that behind the tractor? Yeah, when we got that planter actually in the field, one thing we have to check in the field is, is my planter running level or not? Because if that planter's not running level, a lot of times we'll call it with the nose down a little bit, mm. then everything we've done to set that planter up properly could be goofed up by it not running level in the field. These planters are designed to run level in the field, and we need to check that while we're out in the field and uh, running along. Okay, so it's not enough to do it back at the house, back at the barn. You, when you get it out there in the field, you need to make sure That's you check right. it. That's right. We do all those settings in the shop, get everything set up right. If we go to the field and we don't have that planter running level, we can check that by putting a uh, level right on the main toolbar and have somebody watch it while we're planting. If we don't get that level, we could wipe out everything we worked so hard all winter on in the shop. All right, so keep that planter pass sacred while you're out in the field. In today's Ask an Agronomist, the question is, I noticed in the spring that a couple of days before, my corn was green and looked great. Now it's turning more yellow by the minute. What's going on? In the spring of the year when the soils start to warm up and the corn really takes off, there's a period in there when, uh, especially in corn on corn, when the corn turns yellow uh, or gets a pale green. And we get a lot of calls and say, what's happening out here? This corn was really green yesterday or the day before. It seems like it's getting yellower every day. And in that situation, it, what, it's, what it's showing is nitrogen deficiency. And that nitrogen deficiency may not be because he didn't have put enough on, it just it isn't in the right spot. In the soil, we're starting to decompose last year's crop. And as we decompose that carbon that's in the soil, the microbes consume a lot of nitrogen out of the soil. And this in turn tends to leave the corn in a, in a shortfall for a period of time. Eventually, it usually comes out of it, especially when we get depth of root and we get to the nitrogen the farmers applied, or the farmer applies nitrogen to that field in a side dress format. Sometimes this yellowing is just a function of too much rain in that time period flushing nitrogen away. But if that's the standard operating procedure in the farm where we fight a lot of yellow corn on the front end, that means that grower has to realign his nitrogen management program. We're going to have to move more nitrogen to the surface in the front end of the growing season to make sure we can pay the carbon penalty that the microbes are creating and keep that corn happy. That may be through broadcast application or planter applications, but we're going to need more nitrogen and get it to the plant on the front end. Next on Corn College TV, soil testing for production performance. And later, making sure your planter is running level. Missy Bauer walks growers through the steps of proper equipment placement at planting. Coming up on Corn College TV. Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer is designed to increase your fertilizer efficiency and can boost your yield potential by 10 to 15%. How do we know? 
Well, first we tested Avail in a series of university trials that across different states, different counties, different fields and farms just like yours to prove that Avail will keep phosphorus available for the entire growing season. Avail has been proven around the world, and that's good news for your crop as well as your wallet. So visit chooseavail.com and see where Avail takes you. Hi, Carrie Gottschall here with the perfect solution to your storage problem. A stylish garage or shop right in your own backyard. U.S. Buildings offers you revolutionary designs that are strong, durable, easy to set up, attractive, and affordable. Why have a cluttered garage when you can have plenty of neatly organized workspace? U.S. Buildings put me in my new shop in no time. Their high-quality steel structure is American-made. It's even hurricane-rated. Now, I can work on my antique cars right in my own backyard. Their innovative designs require no internal support, which means you get 100% usable space. I feel like my home is twice as large because I finally have all the storage space I need. Now all my keepsakes are here at home and not stored in a rental unit across town. No wonder thousands of Americans are using U.S. Buildings. You should, too. Call U.S. Buildings right now. Our service representatives are waiting to answer your questions. Build it yourself and save. America needs to know that something still works in this country. One of those things that is working well is agriculture. And at U.S. Farm Report, what's crucial to me is to make sure we convey the confident, competent voice that I hear from America's farmers and rural residents, that they can count on us. Rural America works. Agriculture works. Watch U.S. Farm Report Saturday morning and Sunday afternoons on RFD-TV. U.S. Farm Report, the spirit of the countryside. Today, we're digging back into our discussion about soil sampling. Two weeks ago, we showed farmers how to do it. Now, Ken Ferry is here to reinforce why in today's Farmer's Toolbox. Ken, I guess in today's Farmer's Toolbox, we really ought to have ponchos out here in the rain. But instead, we're going to take some soil samples. Let's first talk about why this is an important tool for farmers. Soil fertility is one of those foundation blocks in a systems pyramid. And if, if we're working on a farm and we have no idea what the soil fertility is, we're really kind of like the blind leading the blind as far as we may be working on something that, that we shouldn't be spending any time on until we take the fertility right. So this kind of becomes the crucial place, place to start in a systems approach. How often, that's a big debate, how often should we be doing this? Well, it depends a little bit on, I guess, your management practices and where you're at. My recommendation would be at least every two years so we can micromanage the soil pHs and we want to keep them in a sweet spot without going in or out or over aliming or under aliming. So uh, in this case, more is better. Uh, okay. Every five or six years is too far apart to manage right. pH. If we're going to do this, uh, what are we looking for whenever we pull these cores? I guess we're making sure we get a good sample, sending it off to the lab. When it comes back, what are you checking for? Well, I'm going to be looking for um, things that I call fingerprints. So if I said that this is a silty clay loam soil, I'm going to look for a soil sample that represents a silty clay loam soil. Sure. If it's a sand, it should look like a sand. So a situation where that's going to tell me if my soil testing crew is in the right spot in the field. But if the soils map says something and the test says something different, I need to figure that out before I go any further. Just ahead, Corn College TV gets hands-on with planters. Level is not just for hanging pictures and barn doors. We're setting up the planter and running it right when Corn College TV continues. Results with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry leading DeKalb Genetics and proven Genuity Trait Technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. Rust is destroying your valuable equipment and property. Rust Guide permanently stops rust the easy way. No scraping, grinding, or sandblasting. Brush, spray, or roll Rust Guy onto any rusted metal and it will not rust again. Rust Guy is not a paint, but an industrial strength formula that kills rust on contact. It leaves a smooth finish that can be left as is or painted. Rust Guy protects from salt, manure, fertilizer, urine, and rain. Call 888 Rust Guy to talk to a rust expert. That's 888 Rust Guy or go to rustguy.com. 
Hi, I'm Greg Vincent, the editor of AgWeb, and welcome to our new site. This marks the end of many long months by a lot of us here at Farm Journal Media, and also even some of our loyal readers who were dedicated to helping us remain the homepage of agriculture. This new site is designed to have more vibrant content, easier navigation, and faster load times while still delivering the same quality information that you've come to expect from AgWeb over the past 10 years. So go ahead and take a look around the site and let us know what you think. AgWeb, the homepage of agriculture. Confusion, doubt, fear, forces that drive the markets in unpredictable ways. It would be nice to find a voice you trust, a broker with an impeccable compliance record, someone with global contacts and expertise, a sought-after speaker who simply tells it like it is. All that with 30 years of experience navigating these markets. Someone like that would be quite a find. Bauer Trading. Experience at work for you. Planners come in a lot of shapes and sizes, but no matter the make, there's one thing they have in common, the purpose of setting seeds. As Missy pointed out earlier, that's a job no one should take for granted, and now she's back with today's agronomics of equipment to look at some planter basics. We start with getting things level. This is probably one of the most critical things or mistakes we see uh, made in the field, and so even though most of what I'm talking about is stuff that we're gonna do in the shop, I do want to really, really emphasize about this leveling the planter because so many things can change if this planter is not level. So when you're out in the field and you're going to set your planter up, uh, when we're talking about leveling it, what I suggest is just having a little magnetic level and go ahead and set it right down on the main toolbar. And then as somebody is in the tractor driving, you're going to be uh, walking along the, the side of it watching that level there and making sure that we're staying in the bubble. Okay, we're not going to be putting it up there in the hitch or, or, or back anywhere else. We want to do it right off this main, main toolbar. Okay, now if you have auto steer, do not try this on your own. Okay, <laughs> we still need to do this as a two person job. Okay, safety first. So we want to adjust that, and obviously, if we're not level, then we're going to make adjustments in our, in our hitch height. So some of the bigger planters are on a three point hitch, anyways. It's pretty easy just to adjust that up or down. Uh, if we've got some of the smaller planters here, typically what I've done, like with the 7000 or the uh, 7200 series, is we'll actually go ahead and put some washers, spacers in between the hitch. Usually what I see typically is that they're running downhill. So they're running too much with their nose down. So we've usually got to get that hitch higher. So you got some uh, adjustment in some of them as far as the height of the actual hitch there. Or we go through and stick some washers on top of the draw bar, anything to get it raised up there. Okay. When we have this main toolbar level here, then this is going to allow us to be level back here. And then also we're going to have our, our seed uh, disc openers here. We're going to be looking at this no-till coulter and look what happens with this no-till coulter. Right now when the planter is level, if I st stick another level back here uh, along my double disc openers and then I'm going to adjust this up or down to where that bubble's in the middle, we can see this no-till coulter is actually above the bottom of my double disc openers, which is right where I want it to be. We do not want this thing to be below the double disc openers. Um, we can also see on this particular row unit, we don't have a, a starter attachment, but on some of the other ones, we do have the starter attachments. And we've got those set where we want them based on the planter being level. So let's go ahead and drop this down. If we're in the field and we're running in more of this down position, you can see how the, everything's kind of rocking forward here. And you can see now, if we take a look at what we've done as far as with this no-till coulter, here I've got my bubble level. Now this actual no-till coulter is actually deeper than what my double disc openers are. But now we've got that too deep. If we have a starter fertilizer, maybe it's deeper than where you're trying to have it positioned. We've now changed the whole pitch or angle that we have back here on, the, on, the, on this row unit. So these seed tubes are designed to run at a certain angle. They've got a certain curve to them or pitch to them. If we've now changed that pitch here, we can have a lot more seed tube bounce and problems there. So maybe we metered well, but now we're not running level, so we're not getting our spacing right. The other thing is this runs downhill like that, uh, we're also going to have problems trying to keep the proper amount of closing pressure on there. Okay, So again, the key to this is keeping this level, 
probably the biggest thing we see in the field is that people are running downhill. And if anything, you'd rather maybe be a slight little bit uphill versus the downhill. Thanks, Missy, and thank you for watching another episode of Corn College TV. We hope you're enjoying your education. Remember, you can always find us online. There you can see the latest episode and catch up on segments you might have missed. Have a great week. Class dismissed. Next time on Corn College TV, managing soil density. How tightly packed are the particles in your field? Plus, evaluating the green. Learn the basics of crop counting. Our experts teach stand evaluation and finding the right tools to fix problems in the field. All that in measuring planting depth next time on Corn College TV. Corn College TV is produced and distributed by Farm Journal Television.